There are a lot of components now to AI art image generation as a whole. Back when this technology first started appearing, which was pretty much last year, by the way, it was pretty much just type a prompt in, generate an image, that's it. Then Stable Diffusion came along and that was open source and people have just been adding little tweaks and new methods and fine-tuned models and all this other crazy stuff. And the AI art space has blown up as a whole. There's so many different facets to this technology now. But actually one of the most staple ways to edit an image is through an editor very similar to this. And this was actually the first one. This is the Dolly 2 image editor. And this is also known pretty much as outpainting. Essentially we have a generation frame and I could click on let's say here and then click the generate button with a prompt and it will try to outpaint and essentially go along with this half of the image and regenerate this half. So yeah, this is pretty much known as like an outpainting editor in the AI art world. And as you can see here are Dolly 2's results, and that's actually doing a pretty good job with uh, expanding this image as a whole here. So we could accept that, and then there's our expanded image. And Dolly 2's outpainting and also in painting, in painting would be erasing a part of the image and trying to replace it. Dolly 2's has actually always pretty much been the best for a long time, even though Dolly 2 as an image generation system for a while now has been kind of not really the best one out there. Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion have taken its place as the kings of AI art generation. But Playground AI yesterday announced that they have their own canvas editor, just like the Dolly 2 outpainting editor. For a while now, Playground AI has been one of my favorite AI art generation websites. The pricing's really good. The UI and experience of using the website is really good as well. And they have great features such as the different filters here. These are just fine-tuned stable diffusion models. They've got a good prompt system here with exclusionary prompts, all your typical stable diffusion settings on the side. They also have prompt-based image editing where you can essentially talk to it like it's ChatGPT and say, oh, give this cat a top hat like that. So that is text based image editing here. And I covered this a while ago and you can see it sort of sort of did things. But there are some obvious fallacies here with the uh, text based image editing, although it's a really good system. Sometimes it'll edit parts of the image you don't want edited. And there's also no out painting with this. So what we've got here is the new canvas beta by Playground AI, and this is their own fine-tuned system here. It still uses Stable Diffusion to generate, and you can actually use a bunch of uh, fine-tuned Stable Diffusion models, too, to generate with this canvas system. But how the outpainting and in-painting model works is it's their own system that they've actually developed. So this sort of puts them ahead from the other websites in this way. No one else can really do it as good as they can with Stable Diffusion. But yeah, it essentially works the exact same way as the Dolly 2 one did, or even Runway ML's version of their Outpainter did, where we essentially can type a prompt in and click the generate button and it will slowly generate us an image here. We can actually change this box as well. Typically in, let's say, the Dolly 2 editor, you only have a 1024 by 1024 box to generate in. This one actually allows you to change the size of this box here. So if I want to do a really small generation only in this corner or just change the person in this image, let's say I can actually shrink this box down and only change those pixels, leaving the rest the same. So yeah, an expandable and changeable box is something we haven't seen before in editors such as this. All right, this generation from Stable Diffusion is not that great, but thankfully we can actually import really good generations from Midjourney, let's say. So we'll go ahead and import a Midjourney generation here, and we can just see, we can actually drag this image anywhere. We'll put it here. And you can obviously zoom in and out with this as well, so you can get up really close and see, oh, I would just want to change this figure here. All right, I'm going to jump right in here and try to edit this image. I'm going to say, I want to see a little village living up in this little cloud here in the sky. And by the way, these actually do take longer to generate than your typical stable diffusion generations here on Playground AI. And I mean, we we got something. It looks like a, yeah, a village is now floating above this. It's a little silly here, but again, this is in beta, so it's not going to be like some perfect magical thing. We can just keep clicking this generation button though and continuously try to get a better and better result. That is something that I would absolutely like to be added to this editor is the ability to do multiple generations whenever I do a prompt like this. Dolly would typically give you four inside of the generation frame. 
Mm, maybe I was asking a little too much out of the model right off the bat, huh? What do you guys think? All right, we'll delete that for now. Anyways, it's also really awesome that we have this exclusive ability to use the different fine-tuned to stable diffusion models inside of the generations. So I'll actually go ahead and use the Woolitize feature here and generate that frame. So it's really powerful to finally have these fine-tuned models available inside of a canvas editor. Here is something important to point out about this canvas editor. Whenever your generation frame here is hovering over another previously generated image, you actually are limited in terms of what filters you can use on it. These ones are not supported as of yet with their model. And that's why if I were to generate right Right by this side of this one, I would be able to use that wool filter. But as we saw with this strawberry generation over here, it's not going to blend these two images together. You actually have to have this generation frame over top both of these images if you want to try to blend them. So we've generated two separate wool images here, let's say, but let's try to actually blend them together now. So I'm going to do some in painting here and erase a bunch of these here and we'll go ahead and we'll try to blend all of this together and we'll go see if we can blend two completely separate images and that actually worked out pretty well i must say here we zoom in plenty of detail there it was able to blend the backgrounds seamlessly so even though that blending model doesn't allow us to use the wool filter we were still able to blend two wool filter images together effectively creating an outpainting photo of the two just by using an in-painting generation frame after the fact so yeah there's definitely a lot of capability here for doing fine-tuned little detail images like that let's try to blend some more stuff together all right, so I've got a completely unrelated image here of this uh, hot air balloons floating around in the desert. Can we just do completely a non-prompted fill-in of this? Let's see if we can just try to blend them together. Okay, apparently it's going to try to do it without us even prompting it. So we'll see how this works. This is a little experimental today. Okay, it definitely tried to do something here without any prompt at all. It's actually able to blend the colors between the floor here and the sky pretty well and then it did its best guess here and did some little floral things but i mean i'm, I'm gonna cut this thing some slack this is a pretty tough thing to do trying to blend these two together it is very interesting though that you don't actually have to prompt it at all that's awesome something that actually used to annoy me with the dolly 2 outpainting editor is if i just wanted to fill in some gaps i actually still had to use a prompt and come up with a prompt and sometimes my prompt would screw with it Let's just try to let the model figure out what the rest of the image is supposed to look like without doing any prompting at all. You know what a cool idea would be is if it tried to actually come up with a new prompt itself. Maybe you could incorporate some sort of GPT-based API in here to come up with brand new prompts. Very interesting creative details it's adding in here. Again, no prompt at all trying to expand upon these images. But yeah, something like an auto prompter would be pretty far down the line, I imagine. Uh, for something like this canvas beta. So yeah, so far features that I really wish I had inside of this canvas beta was the ability to do multiple generations per typing a prompt in here so I could flip through them instead of having to click that generate button again. Faster generation time would be really nice as well. And to be honest, I'm also really hoping for an undo button just like the Dolly 2 editor has. So once I generate something, if it turns out bad, I can just click undo real quick and it will get rid of it. But I imagine that's on the way. So yeah, no prompt at all. We're just expanding the image. So far, this side ended up a little bit better than this side for sure. I mean, these are pretty random looking objects here, not super related to this wool thing that I had surrounding it. But these actually look very similar to the other wool objects that are already in this generation so far. And it actually continued these over here and combined them with these as well. So it's doing something for sure. This is very, very interesting. So after doing a little bit of exploring here, uh, we can see it kind of went ham with the floral pattern all around our previous generation. But yeah, I mean, this is, it's fair to say this is a very high resolution image though for being AI generated. So there's a lot of detail as a whole and that's sort of one of the big benefits of using an outpainting system like this or an editor canvas system like this is you can start to get really, really high resolution generations. So you can take your best mid-journey generations and completely expand them and completely reimagine imagine them in a lot of ways and that's probably what I'm going to be doing next. 
All right, so here is an image I generated in Midjourney V5 of a dog on a pirate ship, and we're going to try to build out the rest of this pirate ship with the editor. So hold, please, while we try to accomplish this. All right, so pretty much here was our original image, and then this is what we uh, outpainted into here. As you can see, the pirate ship did not last very long at all. It kind of uh, turned into rubble down here. As you can see, it's all broken apart with the waves crashing on it, but it actually maintained the color of the waves pretty well, I think. And the sky also got maintained pretty well as well, I think. And then you can see, like, it's, at some point, just everything caught on fire. I'm not so sure what's going on here. We've also got a man literally on fire down in the corner here, which is uh, interesting. I don't think he's uh, having too much fun as a pirate on this pirate ship. And then, yeah, you can see it's all pretty much just destroyed flaming pirate ship here. Yeah, the model really, really started to struggle to render out the rest of this pirate ship in hindsight. Yeah, this is a pretty difficult thing to outpaint here, especially with such a close-up image. You'd have much better luck trying to outpaint a farther away, wider angle viewpoint image than something super close up, especially at the resolution of 1024 by 1024 per generation. You can see there's actually some people like walking on water down here in the corner of this generation for some reason. But the coolest part about this whole thing is that it is such a high resolution for an AI generated imagery. And you really can do these high res outpainting with stable diffusion. And you can actually go in and fine tune and edit certain little specific things like if I wanted to change this from a dog to a cat I bet we could do that pretty easily over here I'll just go in here yes and now we have two cats on the pirate ship instead of the dog and they blend decently enough into the background of course this still is a beta it's not perfect by any means the old stable diffusion in painting and out painting was nowhere this good though I can definitely tell you that this is a step up maybe it's not as good as the Dolly model in some way shape or form I think it definitely trades blows with Dolly 2's in painting and out painting though all things considered and it's just a uh, fun model to mess around with for sure especially since you can do so much of this for completely free thousand images per day which is quite a lot oh okay after 50 generations you get limited on quality and the details but honestly speaking i really think it's the little details of this canvas editor that are really going to essentially be the main selling point of it but i still think the out painting is really fun at the end of the day i especially like the fact you just don't have to put a prompt in and you just let the model kind of do whatever it wants and i also did test it by the way if you just drag over here so there's no influence from the outside on what this image is going to be we can just kind of make our generation frame and click generate and just generate an image that has no prompt at all which i don't even understand it just starts giving you like completely random images which is the craziest thing in the world like i never thought to do that but just no you don't need a prompt just start generating random stuff and see what the model just spits out just this is really like exploring the latent space of these different ai generation models at its best you just have no idea what you're gonna get every single time and it's a completely random photo that has nothing to do with anything else you've generated so maybe a cool experiment would be to like try to combine all these together in some way these AI models aren't really good enough yet to be able to figure out how to really combine these different ideas well together at all. So I don't think this is going to work too well, but I'm excited to see what it's going to try to do. And yeah, it didn't really blend all these together at all. It just kind of gave up. But, you know, that's not ragging on the model. Pretty much no generation model has been able to do this yet. So we're kind of in unexplored territory with this whole thing. And I'm really excited to see how canvases like this expand in the future and especially this one because i feel like a lot of these art websites aren't trying to do this yet and building a tool like this really is where we need to head with this ai art creative space but yeah i think the minor edits and trying to tweak an image to get a specific final result is really what people are going to be going for when trying out this canvas for the first time it's probably what it's going to be best at as people explore it further and yeah, this is just a new outpainting and image generation model. Hmm, I, I can see it completely changed the person here and tried to give him a pumpkin for a head. Interesting result, interesting result. I want the pumpkin to be carved on the top. Carved pumpkin. I just like this idea of having an infinite canvas to continuously generate with and try to expand your different creative ideas. Definitely changed up the, the image there. You never know what you're really going to get with this. I want his mouth to be huge. 
So yeah, folks, go try this thing out for yourselves. It's completely free to test out on Playground AI. It's obviously still in beta. It's not perfect by any means, but this is a leap forward in comparison to the other stable diffusion in painting and out painting models we have seen. Is this something you're going to try out? Is this something you want to use to create new creations with AI? I like this style of editor. I think it's really fun to use. Obviously, the algorithms really aren't there yet where you can't just kind of willy-nilly type stuff in. You have to really learn how to use them. There is a learning curve. There is a prompting curve for sure to get everything perfect and right, and it might be partial to certain things or other things. The matter of fact is that we've been relying on that base stable diffusion to create so much of this AI art technology so far. We really need an update on a new open source model like Stable Diffusion. I believe it's coming down the pipeline in the future. So yeah, we need something that's like pretty much as strong as Midjourney, but also open source to be able to elevate the rest of these models as a whole. But yeah, it's exciting tech for sure. Let me know what you guys think. See you on my Discord and on my other videos. Thanks for watching.